Hello, everyone. I am so excited to um, share this chat that I'm having with Bev Waters. And uh, Bev has taken the intuitive composition course that happened in January. And I've invited her to have a chat with us about what, what her experience was. I mean, she's going to take it again, right? Yeah, yep. yeah. So, I mean, it's chock a block full of stuff. So, uh, first, though, I want to introduce Bev. And just, Bev, if you want to just share a little bit about your journey to becoming an artist, that would be fantastic. Well, um, I injured my back a few years ago and I took up art as therapy and um, what began as therapy turned into a very deep passion and I became obsessed with abstract art and started taking lessons, um, did many, many online lessons and started sharing my work a bit on social media, uh, got a community of people that started becoming interested in my work, started selling a few pieces. And um, it just kind of organically grew to now I have uh, pretty much a daily art practice and a very deep involvement with my community of um, artists here in Southern Alberta. And I'm just enjoying and loving every minute. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So we met a couple of years ago when you were um, heading up my way and you discovered that I lived here. So that was kind of fun. You came to visit me at the studio. Yes. And that day was, I would say, um, also very, very much serendipity and really changed how I felt about my art because I fell in love with your art and your passion for art. And so that you encouraged, you know, you said, gee, you must paint, like, do you paint yourself? And I showed you a few of my works and you planted that seed in my mind. Is this really just a hobby for you? And I, everything grew from there. And that's when I made the decision that, yes, I was really going to pursue this and see where I could go. And it's just been a beautiful journey since that day. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, uh, Bev, because it's amazing how many creative people actually want to do art, but they, uh, for lack of a better word, will dumb it down so that they don't actually have to step into that, you know, those shoes, those roles, those dreams and yes. aspirations, right? Because we're creative beings and why um, sell ourselves short or cut ourselves off at the knees? Like, why not just go for it, right? There's nothing to lose but a little bit of paint, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's taking those risks is the most rewarding part. Right. Right. And, you know, what's interesting, too, is a lot of um, people that want to do art or who are doing art sort of seem to... In, you know, what I've seen, they run into the, the thing about, you know, um, do I have the time or do I have the money or should I really devote this much of my time to art when there are so many other things that need to happen? And, and um, um, I had run into a number of artists a few years ago at a show that weren't doing their art and I, I really felt for them, like they really felt to me in my heart, like they were hurting because they weren't doing their art and we can, we can. And there's so that passion is just as important as someone who loves to play golf or who loves to travel or um, loves to go skiing every winter. It's time and it's money and it's a passion that's so worth chasing. Don't you think? I mean, obviously, right? Yes. Oh, I, I totally agree with you. And I think that the mistake that a lot of people make is that they feel that to be an artist, they have to learn how to make beautiful art right away and be selling art. And it's not like that. It takes time. No one, no one buys a pair of skis and expects to be in the Olympics the next year. It takes time. It takes practice. It takes instruction. Yeah. But I think that you know, uh, people get stuck in that word talented or gifted, and they don't realize that art is something that can be learned, mm. that we all have a creative voice, but we have to nurture that voice and we have to receive instruction and learn how to do it. Just like, just like anything else we would learn to do, whether it's cooking, you know, skiing, golfing, sailing, anything. 
if you want to become skilled at something, you have to receive instruction and then you have to practice. Yeah. 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 And it is a practice like yoga practice, uh, working out, all of these things that you do regularly become ingrained in who you are and how you look at your life and how you value your life, like the way one eats, the way one works their body, um, the way they treat their mind with meditation, all of these things that you do consistently improves in your, in your, in your life and your well-being. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Showing up every day and, and exercising those creative muscles is what builds them for yeah. sure. Yeah. So Bev, tell us, um, you know, what was it that made you decide to take intuitive composition? Cause I know you taken several courses, uh, before then, and then that happened. You took it in January, 2021. Yeah. I had taken countless online courses and I had developed some skills, um, but I was feeling a bit lost and overwhelmed. I think sometimes my experience at least was that I would take a course and then I would get lost in the techniques of that particular teacher. And somehow in the process of the course, I would start to feel like I had lost my own voice. So I had learned all these techniques, but I didn't know a way to apply them to my particular way of painting and my own voice. I had all these puzzle pieces, but I didn't know how to put them all together. Right. And when you had spoken about your course and what you were offering and that you were going to be giving a lot of technical expertise, but teaching it to people in a way that was applicable to their own style of painting, whether they were abstract painters, realist painters, still life landscape, the information was going to be deliverable to people in a way that they could interpret it through their own voice. And that sounded very intriguing to me. Right. And, and that I knew I'd find the clarity that I had been looking for. And that's exactly what happened to me. Oh, that's everything that I learned in intuitive composition, knit everything together in my brain so that now when I paint, I have a solid technical skills. So I no longer get lost and frustrated and stuck. That's great. That's great. And it's really good too, that you could see kind of what your next step was, uh, because I do think that we, um, we do have to grab at bits that we think we need next, right? Like I want to learn about paint or I want to learn about, um, uh, you know, representation or whatever your interest is. And all of these things build on top of each other. But at a certain point, and I found the same thing too, the how do you put it all together? And you still will take things to bring into your repertoire so that you can make sense of it. Because at the end of the day, you want to make the art that makes sense to you. And, And how do you access that? And I think the, for me, putting the intuitive composition course together, composition can make or break a painting. Absolutely. But not putting yourself in your work will break it even more because you're the one that suffers. You can make a, like a structurally great painting, but if you're not doing your own work, that's where we're, we're, we would fall short. So this course is something that I really felt passionate about because I, you know, I have a, um, a design background and I've um, um, spent a lot of time sort of sorting out how um, I can be the best me and, and really listen and to put those two together and offer to other um, artists who seem to, you know, want to go for it, but how are they going to do their own work, like really do their own work, right? And I think that's, that's key. And it's key for me and also key in, in intuitive composition, for sure. Yes. And that's, that was one of the, for me, the biggest benefits is, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> I learned how to be the best version of myself. Getting all of those skills nailed down and understanding the technical and the analytical side of it frees me up now so that I have more confidence when I'm painting. And then the intuitive side is free to come back in because I'm not looking at my work 
going, where is the composition? What, what is this? What, what am I going for? What's appearing? Now, when I look at my work, I, I can see what's happening and I can hear what the painting is saying to me and I know what moves to make next. That's cool. That's so then I can be playful and, and expressive because I've got that solid layer, that foundation of knowledge. Yeah. And so it's almost sounding like that's your biggest takeaway, which is my next question. When you took the course, what did you feel was your biggest takeaway from, from doing that course? And now there's, well, go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, for, for me, that was the biggest takeaway was because there is so much information given out in intuitive composition, but it's given out in small manageable bites in many different ways. So no matter what type of learner you are, you're going to be able to understand the material. And for me, um, going through and, and having it given in a gentle and understandable way made it very easy to apply to my practice. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that for me, that's the biggest takeaway is that newfound confidence and freedom to explore and play. And now I'm not, I'm not afraid now to take risks and mm -hmm. explore and make bold moves because I know if I make a big mess now I know what to do to bring it back online how to get it back to where I want it to be yeah I don't get lost anymore and that's that's so freeing yeah it's interesting isn't it because that confidence and it builds right the more you do it the more confident you become because the more you see that whatever you do you can do something again or even better or you can turn it around or you can start fresh all that kind of um, confidence gives you the ability to be free and just explore your ideas, which I think is amazing. I think it's amazing. Oh, absolutely. And, and also I learned so much about art materials themselves. I had spent, you know, large sums of money on art supplies that I was either afraid to use. I didn't know how they'd interact with other supplies. I didn't know what they were capable of doing. I didn't know, you know, a lot about a lot of my art supplies. And that was one really great thing about the course is that I learned about every supply that I owned. Now I know what to do with them all. So I'm actually using all the things that I invested all of this time and money into purchasing. Yeah. Now I'm actually utilizing all of these things and it's opened up a whole new world of possibilities. Yeah. And they're fun too. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, I have a gazillion supplies and I love exploring with them. And, you know, because I'm kind of a little scientist sometimes in my studio, I figure out what's going to work and what's not. And isn't that the best? Like it's so much fun to explore. Absolutely. It is. And it's, you know, that's where the originality comes in because now I try things that I wouldn't have thought of before. And lots of times I find things that become a unique little signature thing for me exactly. that I discover through experimentation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is the thing, right? If you feel free to explore what you want, your art becomes more you because you're not using somebody else's technique. You maybe you saw something, but then you thought, Ooh, Oh, I want to combine it with this that I have in my studio. And then you have just problem solved and created a whole new technique that's completely yours and you're doing it your way too. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty it cool. Is. De definitely. I now I, you know, since I took your course, now my followers, they know they can recognize my art without having to look at my name. Oh, that's cool. I'm finally getting a really congruent body of work that they all, they're me. That's the Dev Waters. Me. Yeah, ex exactly. And it's so pleasing to me Yeah, to be able to look, go, oh, wow, I, I have found myself. I have found my voice and now I know how to express it. Yeah. Yeah. And you're free to evolve too. Like you've evolved here and we're free to evolve. You don't have to be afraid of trying new things because they're all your ideas. There's no, there's no, um, we don't want to pigeonhole ourselves. Right. And that's the, that's right from the very beginning of this conversation that even pigeonholing ourselves that we're not a real artist, right? Like we don't have to do that to ourselves. So that's great. And this um, time around, I have two more weeks where I've got, well, cause we're all evolving. So 
things that I've learned, I've, I've added to the course so that um, if I can gel things even more or give more value or more um, ways of looking at things, this is what I've done. So that'll be fun for you because that'll be brand new and the course is sort of reorganized too. So hopefully, you know, it'll be spicy for you again as well. <laughs> oh, I know. I know that I'll enjoy it. And just the way that you deliver the materials in such a gentle, supportive and inspiring fashion. It, it feels like being right in, in your studio with you. It's, it was such an enjoyable course because you check in with your students so often. You're there every day, encouraging us, checking in, coming on live, asking people if they need support. How's everybody doing? Giving us a little bolster. It's so uh, inspiring and encouraging. It was uh, such a beautiful experience. Oh, thank you, Bev. Well, I yeah, thank you for that. And I did hear one other artists say that the videos felt like I had made them specifically for her the way um, it landed for her which is really really nice to hear from her and to hear from you as well because I mean I we all have so much experience with what we do in our lives but to actually download it into a way where now I can um, share it with other people I'm I'm thrilled that I could do that. It wasn't the easiest thing, to be honest, to, to start figuring out, okay, you know this, now how do you get it out of your brain and into a video or written form or whatever um, ways that I have shared it in the group, and there's lots. Uh, so it's pretty cool. It was a great experience for me too, because I've learned lots and also now I've learned even more. So I'm sharing that. So that's pretty exciting as well, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I just had a, a wonderful time in it. I see my own growth. And so I, I can't wait for the next go around on this path. It's going to be wonderful. That's great. Well, thank you, Bev. You know, I was thinking one other question is what was your biggest takeaway? But it sounds, you know, I mean, I'm guessing I heard it. Was there anything else that you wanted to add? Because it's, you know, it's been great listening to <laughs> your experience. <laughs> But for anybody out there who's not sure um, if this is for them or, um, you know, is it going to be too out there or too structural or, or what have you, just share what, what you want as a closing. I think that wherever you are on your art journey, this course can only give you huge benefits. There, there are no downsides. It's, it's not high pressure. It's not scary. It's not um comparative there's no comparisons between students it's a when I took it last time the, the people that took the course were also encouraging and inspiring to one another it's a really supportive environment and and just a, a wonderful enjoyable stress-free way to learn to improve your practice so I would encourage anyone whether you're a beginner or an established artist I think everyone can benefit from this course and it's just I'm looking forward to eight weeks of fun and excitement. And there's a rest week too. So you get to breathe. Yeah. I heard yeah. you, you, the, you and the group had said, yeah, this is great, but I think a rest week would be good too, because it's chock-a-block full of goodies. Yeah. And the rest week I think will be beneficial because it gives people time to take all those concepts and lessons and, and just work practicing with them. So they become second nature. Yeah. 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 It's all about how we invest ourselves into ourselves, isn't it? Bringing Absolutely. Our, putting time into what we're doing and really sinking into what it is that we want to do in our lives and creatively. Yes. And establishing a, a, a daily practice. Yeah. Whether that, it's 15 definitely. minutes or three hours, it's that showing up daily, make, making it become a habit. Ah, because I'm putting you first, habit. right? What was that? Yeah. It's such a healthy habit. Yeah. And you putting know, our, you first. Absolutely. I mean, your dust bunnies will wait. I used to be a compulsive house cleaner. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Forget that. I clean up yeah. when we have company. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty much the same. Now. That's my favorite time. <laughs> well, listen, yeah. Bev, I really appreciate you taking the time to share your experience. 
um, with me, but also the listeners. I know that some people aren't sure. Um, a lot of people have just dived right in, but I thought it would be helpful for others to just get a sense from another artist who has taken the course and from their vantage point, what that would be like, uh, because then they can maybe slip their feet into your shoes and say, yeah, okay. Um, so it, it's great. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for having me on. It was a pleasure. Always good to talk to you, Pauline. <laughs> Thank you, Bev. <laughs>